Hey there. Today we're going to be drawing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of flowers. Let's get started. So the flower challenge is really up to you to decide the difficulty level. Here is one example of the possibilities of what you can do after figuring out how to draw all these different flower types. Sunflowers, daffodils, violets, roses, hibiscus, and zinnias. Where you place your flowers on your page is really up to you. You could either draw all six flowers on one page, or you could draw each flower on a separate page. So you would need six pieces of paper. During this flower project, I'm going to use lots of different mediums. And I'm going to show you all the different mediums that you could possibly use. But really, I just want you to use whatever you have at home. So definitely want to use a pencil and eraser. If you have a marker at home, that could be great to use. If you have oil pastels or crowns, I happen to have some glitter crowns, which are really cool to use. You could also use some tempera paint or even watercolor. You know, whatever you use is really up to you, but it doesn't really matter as long as you have, you know, something to draw with and something to color with. All right, so we're going to start off with the sunflower first. Sunflowers are one of my favorite types of flowers. They can go, they can grow really, really tall like six, seven feet tall. So I would like you to start off with a pencil, but I'm going to start with just the oil pastels because it's a lot darker and a lot easier for you to see on the camera. I'm going to start off with the center of the flower. So the center of the flower is going to be a very bumpy circle, almost like a really big meatball, if you like spaghetti and meatballs. So Make sure that you, you're going in a circle, but you want to make sure that those lines are really bumpy. Think of it almost like a circular cloud. If you were to see a cloud in the sky and it looked like a circle. What helps is if you draw a little bit of texture in the middle of that circle. I draw texture by just drawing little dots or little curvy bumps. And they really give a lot of texture to the center of that sunflower because that's where all the seeds are. Now we're going to start to draw the petals. I like to start off with the top petal first. That's called the north petal. I kind of look at it like a compass. Then I go down to the bottom and do the south petal. And then to the right for the east petal. And then to the left for the west petal. After I draw those four petals, then I start to draw my diagonal petals. Those petals that go right in between all the other petals that we just drew. The last thing we're going to do is we are going to fill in all those gaps with our last petals. Try to make each petal the same size. You want to give each petal a little point at the end and you want to try to make them skinny and long petals because that's what kind of petals that sunflowers have, long and skinny. Now we're going to make a nice curvy stem at the very bottom of the flower. And you want to try to make it nice and thick because these are really big flowers. So they tend to have some really thick stems. We're going to give them nice big leaves because they're big flowers. So we're going to make them nice and curvy and round, kind of like the shape of an oval. 
I also like to give a little line right in the middle of each leaf. Last but not least, we're gonna to start to add some color. So again, I'm using oil pastels for this example, and I wanna use a nice bright yellow. I have a bright yellow for the petals, and then I'm gonna fill in the middle with a nice dark brown. The stems can be a light green, and so can the leaves. There you have it. So that's S U N for sun, F L O W E R for flower, sunflower. There we go. All right, so now it's time to move on to the violet. All right, so just like the sunflower, and a lot of the flowers that we're gonna be working with today, we're gonna to start off with the center of the flower. So for the violet, I'm gonna start off with drawing a little dot. Violet flowers have five petals. So we're gonna draw five oval shapes all, all next to each other coming from that dot that we just drew. So the dot's going to be the center, and we're going to connect one, two, three, four, five petals all around. It's okay if some of the petals overlap. That means that if some of the petals are in front of each other, that's okay. And you want to do your best to try to make them as similar size as possible. In the very center, we're going to draw our circles. And those circles are right in the center of violets. They're called anthers. And they have pollen inside of them. So I would draw as many as you want, but I wouldn't draw too many. For this one, I'm going to draw a little bit less than the one that I drew on the left. So I drew about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those anthers with pollen. After that, you're going to draw a long stem. A long curvy stem going all the way to the bottom and for the leaves they're kind of like a almost like a heart shape with a long line down the middle and small lines connected to that long line kind of like a tree branch I'm gonna draw another leaf near the bottom of the stem I'm gonna also you know, keep that heart shape, that curvy heart shape. You'll see in this detailed picture what I mean by those little lines and that long line down the middle. All right, just like that, we have our violet flower all completely drawn. The next step is gonna be adding color. So of course, we're gonna use the color violet for violets the center of the flower is going to be yellow, and I'm using watercolor for this example right here. If you want to also use watercolor, you can do that. And I think watercolor and oil pastel make a really great mixture because oil and water do not mix. So if you get a little bit of the paint on the oil pastel, that's okay because they're not going to mix. The colors are not going to mix. And there we have it. Here is our violet. So that's V-I-O-L-E-T, violet. More specifically, the African violet, A-F-R-I-C-A-N, African violet. All right. On to our next flower, the zinnia. So grab your pencils. I'm going to be using a marker for this one. So I'm changing up the medium. Just like I said, every time I draw a different flower, I'm going to change the medium or, or art material, I should say. So I'm going to start off with a circle. And, and then I'm going to make these really skinny ovals around the circle.
So the yellow part of the zinnia are called florets. And right near them is where the pollen is kept in the zinnias, just like the pollen in the violet. I'm going to draw a few more florets in the center of the zinnia because they have a lot of yellow florets in the middle. Now I'm going to start to draw all the other petals around the zinnia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a U shape, like up, like U, like the word up. And I am going to just continue to draw that U shape all around those yellow florets. And I'm going to try to make each petal the same size. So I'm going to keep going around the center over and over again. I'm going to try to go around the center at least five or six times. So just keep going around and around. It does take a while to draw all these petals, but it's really worth it because at the end you turn out with a really great zinnia. Next we're going to draw our curvy stem. You want to make sure you give that stem a lot of thickness. See how thick that stem is? Zinnias are pretty big flowers and they have really a lot of petals on top, so their stems are pretty thick. Now I'm going to add nice curvy long leaves almost like a nice S shape. And then I'm gonna draw another curvy line right down the middle. So you can do a couple leaves, you can draw more than two leaves, it's really up to you. Now it's time to color. I'm going to use watercolor and I'm going to use some red and a little bit of yellow for the center, green for the stem and the leaves. But really with zinnias, they come in so many different colors. You can use whatever colors you want for the zinnias. Z-I-N-N-I-A. Zinnia. Zinnia. All right. Now let's move on to our next flower. If at, if at any point you need to press pause or take a little break, feel free. You can always come back to the video. The hibiscus. A very beautiful and colorful flower that comes in lots of different colors. So we're going to first start by drawing that long style right in the middle of the flower, that long, almost worm shape, by drawing a long curvy line going up and then back down. Attached, we're going to draw some lines with circles. On those circles are those anthers that we keep talking about where there's pollen inside them, just like there was pollen inside the violet and pollen in the zinnias. That's what's on those little circles on that long style. So at the very bottom, that's where we're going to start to draw the petals around that style. We're going to draw some really wavy petals. Make sure you use really wavy lines. Every hibiscus has five petals, and they're pretty big. There's also a lot of texture within the petals, so we use these other wavy lines throughout each petal to show all that wavy texture. Right next to the bottom petal, I'm going to draw another one on the right and another one on the left. So now I have one, two, three petals. 
So then now I only have room for two more near the back. And the last two, I'm going to draw them smaller than the ones that I already drew. So there's one, and then I'm going to try to squeeze another one in the back. And I'm going to use some wavy lines to show some texture. Nice. All right. Got all these petals drawn with texture. I have my style and my anthers full of pollen. Last step is going to be to add the stem. I'm going to add a curvy stem on the bottom. And for this one, the leaves are going to be a little different. These ones almost look like little pine trees. They have these little pointy kind of leaves with a line down the center. Think of these leaves as like little lightning bolt leaves, like little zigzag lines on both sides. Make sure you have zigzag, zigzag lines all over and a line down the middle. Now it's time to color. And for this round, I'm gonna use some crowns. Alright, that was some fun coloring. Hibiscus. So that's H I B I S C U S. Hibiscus. Hibiscus. The beautiful rose. All right, our next flower. And I'm gonna use some glitter crowns this round. We're gonna start off with a spiral design, and that's gonna be where the center of the, the rose is. Nice spiral design. So you start off in the center and you just keep going around and around about a couple times. Nice curly spiral. Next, we're, we're gonna draw the, a crescent moon shape all around that spiral. And I'll show you an example right here. So you're gonna draw one curved line and then another curved line to create a crescent moon shape. So this shape is gonna go all around the spiral. So on the left side, at the bottom, on the right, on the top, all around. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first crescent moon shape, and it's going to go right next to this spiral. There it is, right snug up against that spiral. There's my little crescent moon. Then I'm going to draw another crescent moon on the right side, just like that. So I'm just going to keep repeating this curved crescent moon shape all around that spiral. about do it for the crescent moons and so now what you can do is you can add these curvy petals all around those crescent moon petals those are the petals around the rose that start to curl out they're not as tucked in as the other petals the crescent moon petals these ones stick out a little bit more All right, now that's it for the petals. Now we're gonna move on to the stem. We're gonna draw a nice curvy stem. The stems aren't super wide. They're kind of on the skinnier side and they have some thorns all over them, real sharp thorns. So we're gonna draw little triangles on the sides of our stem. Draw as many as you want. 
Next, we're going to draw some pointy leaves. They tend to have a little bit of a point to them, a little sharpness to the ends of the leaves. They actually look really cool. So after you finish drawing all of your leaves and stem, then you're going to add some color. I'm coloring my rose red, but they come in lots of different colors. Now it's time to move to our last flower in our flower project, the daffodil. All right, so as always, we're going to start with the center of the flower, which is that really big trumpet-shaped center. We're going to start off with an S-shape and a backwards S-shape. So that regular S-shape on the right, and then the left backwards shape on the left. And then we're going to draw an oval on the top. It's going to look like a vase for a little bit, like as if you were to put like a flowers in a vase. Then we're going to add a little bit of texture on the inside of that trumpet shape. We're going to add a little crescent moon just to give it a little bit of a lip because there's a little bit of a lip on that top of daffodils. Put a little bit of lines for texture. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to start to add the six petals. The petals are very similar to like a raindrop type shape where it's like a nice curve on one end and a point on the other. I'm going to add three lines for texture. You might want to add two lines if they're a little smaller. So I'm going to add another petal on the left and another petal on the right. Add my lines for texture, about three lines. Now I'm going to add my petals in the back the petals in the back are going to be a little bit smaller. The petals in the front are a lot closer to you in the foreground, so they're going to be a lot bigger. The ones in the back are going to be smaller, and you only really need to draw a couple lines for texture for those ones in the back. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five petals, but there's actually six petals in daffodils, but one of the petals is behind that center trumpet shape, so we can't really see it. But that's okay. Now we're going to draw our skinny, curvy stem. And daffodils have some really interesting leaves. They actually have very long and skinny leaves. Very similar to like a horn on like a bull or some kind of animal with horns. Very long and skinny grass-like leaves. You're then going to draw a line right down the middle of each leaf just to show a little bit of that texture in the leaf. All right, now I'm gonna close up my marker and get out my tempera paint, my liquid tempera paint. That's what I'm gonna use for my final flower. If you wanna use some liquid tempera paint, if you happen to have some, you can use that, or you can use whatever kind of coloring materials you have at home. Daffodils usually are yellow. Sometimes they come in white as well with a little bit of yellow.
that's D. A, F, F, O, D, I, L. Daffodil. Daffodil. Well, that was a lot of fun. If you were able to draw all six flowers, I am very impressed. Great job. If you really want to challenge yourself, try drawing all of those six different flowers in one arrangement on a piece of paper. Here's a couple of examples right here. Give it a shot. Thank you for joining me. Have a good rest of your day. See you next time.